Hi there, I'm Harold On, and this is a classic Whitehall Spirit 14. And over here is a 11 foot 6 West Coast model. Both of these boats are examples of probably the best rowboats available, but today I'd like to show you something about the equipment and how to rig them up and how to sail them. This is the tiller, the rudder assembly. These are the pintles, these are the gudgeons. You slip the longer pintle into the lower gudgeon, slide it over into position, drop it down, and this little clip here holds it down so it can't come loose. Here we have an elastic strap that makes the rudder a pickup rudder. And the strap holds it down while you're sailing. The pin can be taken from that position positioned over here so that it's locked down if you're sailing in deep water. And you can also take the pin, pull the blade up, lock it in like that, and it holds it up, for example, like it is now on a trailer. So it's basically got three positions, and uh, it's as simple as possible. This is a White House Spirit 14 equipped with an optional bronze centerboard. Like the rudder, it'll kick up when it hits something, we're on the beach right now, so it won't drop, but you just raise this handle, call it the whale's tail, and the centerboard will drop down. It's locked up like that. Also, when you're trailering, you keep the uh, handle off here to the side and let the centerboard rest against the trailer so the weight of the uh, centerboard is continually on the uh, strap that holds it up. This boat's equipped with a jib, and uh, it's got a little clip on it that you can clip onto the bow. And it holds. This would be the halyard that you put through the top of the mast to haul it up. It's freestanding, so it doesn't have a head stay. And here at the back of the sail, called the clue are the two control lines, which are called sheets. We'll show you how to set these up later. Also, when you're learning, uh, for the first few times out, leave the jib off. It'll be much easier to just manage the one sail. This is the mainsail rolled up around the boom. This is the lug, which is at the top of the sail. This is the halyard, the line that'll haul the sail up, and we'll put it on the mast in a minute. And at the end of the lug is the downhaul, which will stand the lug up once it's vertical. This is the main sheet, which I'll clip onto the boom. And the bottom block, hold up straight clips on to the appropriate spot, in this case at the back of the centerboard valve. Now, we're just about ready to hoist sail. Now this is the main halyard coming off the lug. This is the mast. This boat has two, two uh, fair leads. We're putting the main halyard through the lower fair lead. We take the mast and keep the cleat forward and the clip aft. Put it in its socket and it's standing. And uh, to raise the sail, just haul it up. Take the main halyard, pass it behind the belaying pin, and then pull it tight by sweating it, and then taking the slack out. And that'll, that'll tighten it right up. That's the way they did it in the old days. And run the line behind the belaying pin one, behind the bottom of it, give it a twist, and it's locked on. You only need one tuck. And then you can coil up the rest of the line, Tuck it over the pin like that. 
This strap is a boom in hull which stops the boom from coming away from the mast, so it just snaps through the clip on the back of the mast. It's very simple, works very well. This is a lug down hull, and you just tension it enough so that the sail doesn't have any wrinkles in it. Pass it behind the uh, opposite blading pin. Once around the top of the blading pin, again around behind it, give it a twist the right way, <laughs> and uh, it's locked off, coil up the line. <clears throat> it over the pin, and your ship shape. Before heading out, set your oars up so that you can easily access them when you need to. Now you can just leave them lying in the boat, like so, or what I prefer to do is to put the oar lock in and set the oar like this, and then all you have to do is pull the oar out and you can row. The other thing we have is uh, little innovation called ore pockets. And an ore pocket will contain the ore snugly inside the boat like so. Stops it from falling around. Now we're ready to hoist the jib. We'll just clip it in on the bow, take the halyard, pull it up, cleat it here on the mast. These control lines We'll run out either side of the boat aft, and that's about it. We're ready to go out on the water. What we'll do, though, is we'll drop this sail and leave all the lines attached so that we can haul it up in the water. But if you're only if you're just learning how to sail, I leave the jib off entirely. It's uh, you've got enough to handle with just the mainsail the rudder, and uh, learning how the boat handles for the first few times. Once you know how to sail, go out with the jib and then add that to your repertoire. Jib's also excellent when you have a crew on board. It gives them something to do, especially small children. They love handling the jib. It's a small sail, quite easy to handle. And that's it. Let's head out on the water. Now we're going to haul the sail up out here in the water. The main thing when you're doing that is to keep the wind blowing at your back and the sail away from you so that you don't get trapped by the sail. I've also preset the tension on the downhaul for the lug so that when it's up it'll be at the right height. So having said that, let's just haul it up. There we are. So this is how the tiller operates. Very effective. When you're sailing, you actually try and use as little tiller as possible. The first thing you need to learn when you're learning how to sail is how to tell the direction the wind is blowing. When you face straight into the wind, from where the wind is blowing from, that's called the eye of the wind. You develop your senses, so you automatically know which way the wind is blowing. When you feel it on your face, evenly on both sides or on your ears, then you'll know you're looking right into the eye of the wind. You can look at the ripples on the water, which will line up across the wind. Sailboats use wind for power and can sail right up into the wind. Not straight into it, of course, but off either side. It's called tacking into the wind. And a good sailboat, a racing sailboat, can sail up about 40 degrees either side of the eye of the wind. Uh, a traditional boat like this, though, is good for about 45 or 50 degrees to windward. To start sailing, let the mainsail line up with the wind. Just pull it in a little bit. Grab the tiller, and you'll sail off on a broad reach.
So now I'm sailing here on a broad reach. And if I point a little higher up into the wind, I'm on a close reach. If I bring this mainsail all the way up high, as high as I can go up into the wind, I'm close hauled. The wind is coming over the right side of the boat, the starboard side. So this is a starboard tack. I'm close hauled on the starboard tack. So now I'm sailing close hauled with the wind over the left side of the boat, the port side. So it's called close hauled on the port tack. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the tiller down like so. And using the momentum of the boat, pass through the eye of the wind, let the mainsail out a bit, and as soon as it's through the eye of the wind, haul it in a little bit, fall off on the other tack. So the wind is now coming over the right side of the boat. We're on the starboard tack, pointing up into the wind, close hauled. Now I'm running downwind with the wind. And if I cut the helm down, come around this way, now, because the main goes over, that's known as jibing, so the opposite of tacking. Jibing is really quite easy. Once you get the hang of it, you can jibe all over the place. So let's say the wind is dropped and you want to go in and you need to drop your sail. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Undo your in-hull. Undo the main halyard. Pull it away from the mast and just ease out the main halyard while you drop your sail. Then lay the whole thing in the boat. And you're ready to set up your oars and row in. There we go. When there's no wind, this is the fastest way to do it. The nice thing about sailing off of a dock is you can have your sail all set up and ready to go. The main thing to remember is to have the wind lining up with the dock, or at least not pushing you onto the dock. So when it's time to go, just shove the boat off and hop aboard and away you go. Landing at a dock is fairly fun, it's fairly straightforward. Just make sure you're pointed upwind when you get there so the wind acts as a brake. And uh, again, it isn't uh, pushing you into the dock. Just bring her around nicely. And there we are. Now we're sailing a Whitehall Spirit 14 with a jib. So let's go out and see what that's like. Whitehall Spirit 14 sails very well under main and jib, but often you'll find yourself needing to tack around with no space to jibe or room to fall off and try again. This is when you need to get the bow of the boat just through the eye of the wind. Sculling with the rudder and tiller can often help. Once the bow is through the wind, hang onto the jib sheet and use the back jib to push the bow over onto the next tack. Make sure the main sheet has lots of slack so the mainsail doesn't counter what you're trying to do with the jib. When you're far enough around, bring the jib across, set the main, and sail off on the new tack. Here's an example of sailing into what sailors call a hole, or a spot with little wind. 
Use the remaining boat speed to come around as much as possible, then back the jib to complete the tack. Next we're heading out into some rougher water in a Tai Spirit 14. I'm using the oars to get clear of the narrow breakwater entrance. Falling off onto a reach under full main, the boat handles well. Good boat speed makes for easy handling in lumpy water like this. The trick is to have enough sail up to give good boat speed, but not so much that it can cause the boat to heel too much. Keep yourself and your crew sitting toward the windward side so that you can quickly shift your body weight to counter any unexpected wind or wave action. Hold the sheet in your hand and keep it ready to let go instantly if you need to. Off the wind, you'll scoot right along with all the forces behind you. When you first head out, if you possibly can, plan to return with the wind behind you. Try to avoid beating home in a rising wind. Here the wind's blowing 10 or 12 knots, and although it's a little lumpy, we're nice and dry in this Thai Spirit 14. This is a Thai Spirit 14 and it's equipped with Jiffy Reefing Gear. Reefing Gear is a way of making your sails smaller in the event of a high wind. And these little beads are called peril beads, which enable the rope ring to slide on the mast. And what we do is we clip the lug into the peril beads. When the mainsail is fully hoisted, the lug is held tightly against the mast by the ferrolead and the halyard. Reefing involves lowering the sail somewhat and as the lug comes down the mast, the perils and the rope ring will keep the lug against the mast. The sail is lowered by taking in these reefing lines at the bottom of the sail while simultaneously easing out the main halyard. Cleat off the main halyard, and then cleat off the reefing lines to the respective cleats on the boom. Tuck the ends afterwards to keep them from uh, getting in the way. You'll need to readjust the lug down hull for the new lowered position of the mainsail. Before heading out in a higher wind, make sure you've done uh, a lot of practicing in light airs. Make sure you know how to tack and jibe and make sure your moves are automatic. There's a lot of force involved in a high wind and things happen very quickly. Here we are sailing with a reef mainsail in only about 15 knots of wind, but with a really lumpy wave condition. As I jibe around, I'm keeping the main sheet quite free. Note how fast it comes across. We easily complete the jibe and we're not even taking any spray aboard as we make our way along and in full control. A small boat like this can handle really quite rough water, but you need to already know how to steer, tack, jibe and handle all aspects of the boat before heading out. Practice until your moves are automatic and then try sailing in higher wind and rougher water.